Some of you may have saw our last little leg of the trip here uh, where we traveled from the Hershey Show back down to beautiful sunny Florida and we brought our e-bikes with us. Uh, the cargo carrier that we're using in the back here is a uh, 200 pound capacity cargo carrier and the e-bikes do fit on here just fine. We have two of them uh, which we'll show you here in just a bit but you can kind of see the routine that I have to go through to uh, get them strapped down uh, to where they're secure and I feel as if they're not going anywhere. I think there's a better way of doing this. Um, basically I have four ratchet straps per bike and then of course the cover itself and then some bungee cords to hold the cover on and you can see that we do have a hitch that is offered on this RV. I've been riding on a daydream. There's an added benefit when you use a hitch mounted carrier and that is once you are at a location like we are now the only way I can carry the bikes is in the bed of the truck. Now I do have a big trail shield but that would be nothing more than me pulling the pin and pulling that shield off and it would give me access to that hitch also so that I might be able to put a bike rack on the back of the truck and we could go explore um, without the uh, back of the truck being opened up. Of course, obviously, we could just throw the bikes in the bed of the truck, but you can see I have other stuff here that I would have to move out of the way or make arrangements you know, for somehow one of them being the fifth wheel hitch that's in the middle. Uh, the other is the generator. Uh, this is the stuff that normally stays protected by the tonneau cover. And uh, of course, if you have a bike back here, you can't do that. The company's called Hyperax. This is a Volt RV. I've got a lot of information here uh, covering their product. Uh, this is the manual for putting it together. The assembly instructions, very clear, good pictures. We'll show that to you in a second. And this is set up for a two inch hitch receiver, uh, which is a class three or higher. So that doesn't mean just because the opening of your hitch is two inches. If it's not a class three hitch, you, you can't be putting this on there because those class of hitches are rated based on um, how much weight they can handle. So it's not based on the size and what it fits into. Again, it's the weight. Now they make quite a few different hitches. If you don't have anything this big, anything that you know requires that something that heavy, um, or you're getting into something that's not you know an RV, they do make a Volt uh, Two. That's this is the Volt RV. They also have the Volt Eco, which is for a little bit lighter, and then the Blast, which is uh, for something even lighter. Uh, but this one being for RV use. Uh, this one is uh, two inch again, class three or higher, 140 pound max load, five inch max tire width. Uh, it is not a tiltable rack where the other ones are tiltable. Uh, and that's for like hatchback use, stuff like that. So I have all the bigger components already out here. You can see there's a couple of uh, right sides, a couple of left sides, uh, two different hold down bars. I'll just refer to them as hold down bars. And then you have uh, a small package of hardware here. Looks like for some hold down hooks of some kind or straps. Here you have the straps themselves. Here's that handle that I was talking about. It's kind of a carry and, and hang up handle. And then you have uh, some more stuff here. These are all hitch pins some with some larger bolts. I'm sure that's probably to hold on the uh, bigger pieces. And then uh, these two pieces also. But pretty well laid out uh, as far as the finish and everything. It looks like it has a nice powder coat to it. Um, it's pretty thick. It doesn't look like it's going to chip necessarily very easy. And then of course, like I say, you have these big locks uh, that are keyed, which of course they give you some keys just for that reason. Um, the thing that I'm not real sure on mine uh, is the uh, step through design. If you have a step through, for example, if you have two electric step through bikes, there's a couple of other components that you need. 
uh, that you can buy in the kit and speaking of which there'll be a discount code and a link in the description for this uh, that should give you everything at a reduced rate uh, based on the fact that you're watching this video uh, they've got a special arrangement set up for that um, but we do have a uh, Ingway uh, bike that has kind of a low bar I'm not sure how that's going to work yet um, I'm thinking it should by looking at this but we'll find out together there pretty straightforward and again the instructions that are given in this book are very clear they're very very clear um, I like the fact that they just show you a finished product that helps me out being a mechanic that's what I like to see so I know what it's supposed to look like once it's done but it does tell you um, you know in the pictures what to do to get it together um, it's not just written you know it's it's just set up to where you can just look at the pictures and figure it out all right so this is the final product a couple things to look out to or for when you're transporting your bikes take the batteries off bring them inside uh, you're gonna save 30 pounds off of this rack by doing that these these two batteries together have got to weigh 30 pounds um, uh, I might be exaggerating a little bit let's say uh, 20 at, definitely and of course the least amount of weight back here the better I don't have the straps that hold the tires down in the cradles tightened um, and that's because I'm probably going to do a ratchet strap type thing uh, personally um, so that's up to you they make or I should say they offer and they supply a couple of straps that are meant to go underneath these bars and you know the, the support bars of the rack and up and over both bikes and then you can cinch them tight to help with some support there again I think I can do that with ratchet straps uh, that I have that are made for bikes that I've talked about in the past that I was using for the other rack um, as far as the support I don't see that main bar I know this is, looks a little confusing but the main bar I don't see any deflection in that thing at all um, but there is movement look at all this movement and, um, I don't know what that's going to do to translate into something going down the road uh, if it's some sort of an issue I doubt it it's built well I, I mean the the physics behind it look pretty sound um, the thing that I would be concerned with is whenever you are expecting this to stay locked and be unstealable based on the uh, locking system that they supply um, if somebody wants to get into it they can uh, we will run another chain a big 10 millimeter uh, kryptonite chain that actually has an insurance policy on it for bicycle theft uh, we'll run that through this and then through the bumper or around the bumper um, modifications that's up to you I think I'd like to see this rack a little bit closer to the back of the RV personally I have the room uh, so if I remove this rack uh, the factory cargo carrier I can uh, move this thing deeper into the uh, the receiver and I could drill a new hole for it but then that anti-rattle bolt that they offer um, I like that um, because there's no slop in it that bolt is holding this thing from moving side to side there the the side to side movement you see is just from the flex uh, from all of the uh, mounting um, I think there's probably a little bit of flex wanted uh, but not a lot and the thing that I'm going to be real excited about is if we're hauling these uh, back here with the cover that we have the bike cover is de uh, designed to work with a rack system like this and we've been trying to use it with the cargo carrier and it's been kind of a pain in the butt to to cinch it up uh, you know to, to get it to where it, it holds all the way around the bikes the thing that I think that I like about this the most personally and Heidi brought it up is two things I don't know if you can tell how dirty the tires are here um, that's because even though I had it covered underneath the front of the RV uh, we were in this gravel and uh, the rain uh, w was running to the point where it was splashing and causing this dirt to get up on the rim um, especially on the other bike not so much this one but especially on the other one uh, this will keep it up off the ground um, it'll keep to where air circulating underneath the cover but more importantly if we're inside the RV and we decide we want to run to the store 
um, for day to day locking this up and securing it I don't mind putting it up here and uh, snapping these things down it's pretty easy because um, this piece here uh, when it's released uh, and then you release the other one for the other bike um, of course when you release the first one you take the bike off uh, you then loosen the other one and you pull the pin out this folds down this thing that has a handle on it it will fold down so you can access the other bike um, and you don't have to lift the bikes up and on you can roll them on uh, you can roll them especially the back one you can roll it starting on this side so all I do is lift the front tire I set it in this cradle and then I lift the back end of the bike and I push it and it rolls itself over to the front one um, so it's not it's not difficult to do of course the back one's easier you know you just uh, lock your rear brake and pivot it up on the front and then you lift the rear and uh, set that on there and that's it so yeah as far as day-to-day -day security I like the idea that I can just throw them on here push those hooks down and lock it and be done with it so um, I don't know is this a keeper for us it, it could be uh, the thing that I again like about it is the fact that if we decide to go somewhere and we want to um, uh, you know go to a trail that's not rideable to, from our location uh, we can put this on the back of the truck without me loading it in the truck and uh, drive to where I need to go uh, let me go ahead and give you some more information on the company HyperX Volt RV is this one here um, the uh, product itself obviously comes from Taiwan, but this was shipped out of New Jersey, and it wasn't uh, it wasn't very long for it to be received. So I'm very happy with that. The company has a really nice website. You can see the current pricing there, and that's with two e-bike adapters. That's with the the crossbars. Uh, I could probably run a crossbar. It'd be a little bit nicer in the case of the one that we have there now. But yeah, I. I'm very, very happy with uh, the way that it looks and the way that it operates. And here's what I was talking about. Those are the step-through e-bike, or what they call lady bike adapters. That's funny. Um, you know, they, they attach to the seat post and the handlebar post uh, so that it can come down and uh, that, that hook can come down and have something really solid to lock into. So you can see in my case, what I did was I just put the short bike in the back to allow the long hook to go down far enough uh, for it to grab onto it and uh, then this one here uh, is the shorter one and it grabs the bar it, it just makes it easier to put that bike in the back which not a big deal uh, the one thing you know you want to center them you want to make sure that they're not too far one way or the other of course same thing as always watch your tail lights you definitely want to watch your tail lights uh, it looks like this side here these lights are a little bit more uh, free than on this side so I might make some adjustments there I might uh, take both bikes and move them in that direction which it allows hope this helped you out of course the links are down below for the HyperX Volt RV e-bike rated bike rack thanks